I'm Nathan Connolly, uh, and I'm the director of Dead Ink Books. Uh, we're an independent press based in Liverpool, and we're supported by Arts Council England. Uh, and I'm also the editor of Know Your Place, Essays on the Working Class by the Working Class. Know Your Place is a collection of 23 essays uh, which asked working class writers to reflect on their own experiences of being working class. It began as a conversation on Twitter when Nikesh Shukla, um, the editor of The Good Immigrant from Unbound, uh, he posted a tweet asking for, well, saying there should be a, uh, a state of the nation book similar to The Good Immigrant, but from working class people. And that was kind of in the aftershock of the Brexit vote. I kind of jumped in straight away um, because my background is a working class background and said, we'd love to do that. Um, and he was kind of like, well, do it. Um, so we did. I didn't quite anticipate how big a deal it was going to be from the start. Um, but I think we've got there now. So as soon as we kind of replied saying we wanted to make that book, we were inundated with tweets and emails from people saying that they wanted to be involved in some way or they just thought it was a fantastic idea. Um, so we put it up on Kickstarter. Um, initially with a target of £7,000, um, which is more than we've ever raised for a book before, um, and we reached that target within a week. Uh, the book opens with Abundance Matanda's essay, The First Galleries I Knew Were Black Homes. Um, and that kind of sets everything off and is probably one of my favourite essays from the book because it just starts with this explosion of energy. Um, and that's just about how growing up she wasn't necessarily taken to galleries or kind of what we would expect as traditional art venues. Um, but within her community, within people's houses and the way that kind of family history was passed on, there was the essence of the art gallery in that and an essence of archiving uh, materials for kind of future generations um, and she tells that essay with such confidence and kind of just throws all the rules out the window straight from the start we thought it was such a great way to begin from there we go on to essays from onto subjects like food and holidays uh, where we kind of look at the working class experience and kind of aspects which everyone can kind of have their own experience and kind of appreciate uh, but kind of see a new side to that from a working class perspective. We also have essays, um, we have one from Andrew McMillan, which, was a, which is about uh, gay role models growing up and about how that affected him in terms of what might be permissible within his community and how that shaped his own behaviour. We have essays from, uh, there's one, a brilliant one from Gina Moore Barrett about how it wasn't until she left a working class estate uh, for something kind of that she perceived would be better that she realized she'd lost a lot in leaving that state and kind of the community it held um, so we try and cover quite a broad broad selection of uh, subjects and the whole idea was to kind of just let people pick up on tiny little niches that they thought were interesting perspectives and they all build to a kind of bigger picture I think we have an image of the working class uh, when we, we hear about it on the TV and when we discuss it um, and we can kind of, it has a lot to do with kind of flat caps and whippets which is something we wanted to kind of av avoid um, and I think we've tried to paint a picture of the working class in this book as not a monolithic single entity but of lots of different communities which have lots of things in common but also have lots of differences. I think there is a tendency to fetishise the working class in a kind of light of the road to Wigan Pier um, or which isn't by a working class writer and is from the 30s so it's the idea that that can be applied to, to today isn't that altogether that helpful um, but even things like Shayla Delaney or uh, Kez or Walter Greenwood you can still these are single experiences of working class life um, and I think there can be a fascination with picking up on that gritty um, experience of the working classes long suffering and downtrodden which isn't always true um, and I was very clear when we wanted to make this book that we didn't want this to just be a chronicle of working class suffering and kind of working class disappointments um, because that isn't working class life. 
Um, there is elements of that to it, but I don't think it's truthful to say that all of working class life is um, young boys who want to be dancers and not being allowed to by their coal mining father. There's kind of a middle class yearning for the darker sides of working class life, um, which exists, but it shouldn't be the only kind of experience on record. Um, and we've tried to fit in to fit in both in equal measure. So there are the, the dark side is in there. There's the kind of the struggles and difficulties are in there, uh, but so is the joy and the, the family life and the friends and kind of the homes. My own essay is kind of touches on kind of that mixed upbringing um, in terms of it's about who is allowed to access the the notion of being working class. And it's something which kept coming up again and again when we were put, putting the book together. People were kind of obsessive over this idea of, well, who is working class and who can write for this book? And are you sure they're going to be working class? What if someone lies? Um, which someone might have lied, um, but I wasn't going to test people. And I found that quite a patronising idea that we, we would test people for them to be in working class. Um, the way we phrased it for the book was, anyone who identifies themselves as working class or from a working class background. Um, and people were free to do with that what they wanted. Working class life has always been tied up of this, you know, experience and very middle class idea of poverty, which is the kind of deserving poor and the undeserving poor. And there's always this constant test of, of experience. And um, if we go to something like Billy Elliot, uh, that idea of, you know, he wants to, to dance, but that can't be working class. You can't be a dancer and be working class. Um, and I think that happens all the time. And, and even when we think now of, we have a lot of people going to, we have a, a, probably about two generations now which have increasingly been going to university. Um, and a lot, for a lot of working class parents, they want their children to go to university. And that's seen as a way of accessing well, a, a number of different things, but perhaps an easier life. Um, and yet, do we then remove that access to that working class culture from someone once they've been to university? Are they no longer working class because uh, they've got that education? And we see it in such ridiculous things as well as about what beer someone might drink or what bar they go to, what, whether they eat avocados or quinoa. Um, whether someone can, as soon as they move into kind of a middle class boundary culturally or economically, what do they have to lose? Um, and I think that, again, focuses on a lot of what working class people don't actually consider important about their identity as working class. Um, I think working class identity is much built, more built around community um, and ideas around yourself as part of something wider. And I think in a way it's, it's used to, to silence working class voices, to remove that authenticity, just the same way people try and appropriate working classness for authenticity. We try and remove it from working class people. Um, you can't be working class, you're a journalist. You can't be working class, you're an author, um, or you're a TV presenter, or you can't be working class, you work in, you're, you're a politician. Um, and when we, we do that, it means again and again, we, we reduce the working class to, they can't be educated, they can't, they can't do any of these things that the working class should and needs to be able to do, uh, to have a voice, to be able to report on their own communities and, and the nation, and to be able to write about what their lives are, to be able to make films or TV about that life, um, to even go into things like studying law, so that you know, the law itself can represent working class experiences. Um, and so every time someone kind of crosses that boundary, we, we remove that from them and we take away that authenticity. Um, and I think it's important that we start, um, because, because that kind of purity test comes from inside and outside the working class itself um, at different times. And I think it's important that we treat that purity testing with a lot of suspicion. And to as well kind of round things off to say that these, these are all working class experiences you've heard from. None of them are entirely consistent with each other. Um, and if we want to start hearing from the working class, we need to start 
changing our perception of what the working class can be.